The following is a presentation of Play Fly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. Well, hello and good evening, everyone. Like yeah, you like that? I that like little, that. little Christmas. He's dancing hey. in Spartan Stadium. Ooh, that intro was live. I appreciate that, oh, folks over at Haptics. It is Tuesday, December twelfth. Is that right? Two thousand and twenty-three. <laughs> Welcome to the only show about Spartan Dogs, hosted by Spartan Dogs. This is Sparta MSU. I am your host, Jason Strayhorn, along with my co-host. The boss, Otis Wiley, and J.U. Choo Choo Culcrick. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you. If this is not your first time, we absolutely worship you. Thank you for being loyal to us. And, you know, on this holiday season, there's a lot that we need to cover because it is that special time of year for a lot of reasons. But don't forget to click that like and subscribe button and follow us on all of our social media platforms at This Is Sparta MSU. And let us know where you are watching us from. We love that live chat. Let's roll with it. Guys, welcome to another week. We have to talk about specific things right now. We're going to go right into the coaching hires for Michigan State. Courtney Hawkins has been retained as the wide receiver coach. Spartan Dogs stand up for Michigan State. How about that, fellas? Yeah, I think that's absolutely huge. Um, we saw on uh, Coach Hawk's uh, Twitter, or now known as X account, he said, back like I never left. Uh, you know, that's that's uh, that's pretty cool. I think it's, it's uh, you know, something that's definitely great, especially the pedigree that he has, um, you know, playing at – playing at Michigan State, playing at a high level in the NFL for so many years, coming back. And I think it's something that's really huge because of you got to think about all the different receivers has been that that's been under the tutelage of Coach Hawkins. Um, you know, Keon had some work there. Um, you know, that's one of the things Keon said. He came here to learn from a guy that played in the league. And uh, you got J uh, Speedy Naylor, you got Reed, um, all those guys um, that's that's going to be coming out. So that's absolutely huge. And another thing that's really big on on keeping Coach Hawkins here at Michigan State is because Coach Smith and his staff coming from the West Coast. Not of them, not a lot of them have ties to the Midwest and the East Coast. And Coach Hawkins has that, so he can continue to go and recruit in Florida, recruit on the East Coast, recruit in the Midwest. You know, point guys in the right directions. So I think that's really huge for this coaching staff and the players, uh, that foundation in coaches. Yeah, yeah, look, I, I can't even say say any better than uh, what you just said. But, you know, Coach Hawkins, uh, let's talk about, like, the ties he has with the recruiting um, and, and our boy Megan Tron and Nick Marsh, too, and an element that, uh, you know, Coach Hawkins is bringing that old school coaching um, flavor and his approach, but he's also relatable. Uh, loves these guys more like his like his sons, um, and so it's good to see you know Bucktown, Flinttown, Michigan State proud coming back to the the green and white. And uh, I know his family is invested, uh, just like everybody else's families are. But it's good to see Coach Hawkins being retained, knowing that uh, we got some we got some good receivers. Montori Farster came, you know, start developing into what we knew Montori could be. Um, and so another year with uh, with Coach Hawkins, Montori, and then you got Nick Marsh, and you got some other guys uh, coming uh, or still playing. So this is good. This is a good get to get him back, knowing that Coach Smith has that high power offense, like you said, Chu. Without question, you know he talked about having a uh, emphasis on having coaches with Big Ten ties, recruiting wise, uh, understanding the top, the high school landscape, the coaches. And, and how important winning the state of Michigan is. This is very, this is vital for Michigan State in the recruiting aspect, in my opinion, to keep 
Courtney Hawkins on as coach. Congratulations to him and his family. As we all know that, you know, this was a, this was, this is a tough season that he had to go through before and then having to, you know, now um, get reacquainted with the new staff. I'm sure he's doing a phenomenal job of that hitting the ground running as we know he absolutely is born to do. Also reported on the streets that Joe Rossi will be named the defensive coordinator for Michigan State. He is currently was leaving. He would be leaving Minnesota, P.J. Fleck and company, uh, as the defensive coordinator in the same position to come to Michigan State. Fellas? Yeah, we we, we saw the this defense firsthand, obviously, being at Minnesota. And, you know, they fly around and they play fast, fast physical football. Um, you got that element that kind of gives you this pizzazz that, you know, not say we need it, but more so like, we have some leadership knowing like who the scheme and who he is. Um, you know, you're getting this kind of this four, two, five ish with a stand up edge guy, which, you know, we have guys that can play that edge. That's like hybrids from a, a linebacker slash defensive end. And so um, coming in with big 10 ties, being able to recruit really big and, and, and talented defensive uh, players to, to Minnesota. So uh, you're going to hopefully see some of those guys, which we kind of saw some, some guys decommit that was coming to Minnesota with the four star, uh, four, four stars D tackle, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So you think about him coming in already knowing the element of the Big Ten country. Um, and, you know, I feel like we got a, you know, a scheme that's going to get us excited to get back to knowing what we're, 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 we're trained to be as a defensive standpoint, Spartan dogs, hard, physical, hit you in the mouth, regardless of win or loss, you're going to leave bruised. I think that's an element that he's going to bring fully back to it. Um, and you got a young, you know, we got a guy that's obviously on our show um, in the second block that is a real key element that, you know, could be working around. So I'm excited to, to have. He has, like we talked about, has a solid secondary coming back that's young, got some experience. So in that element, you know, we, we're solid there. But be able to get that pressure back, you know, get to the quarterback and sicken him every chance you get, I think he's going to bring that element. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I think uh, this type of defense is uh, a defense where, you know, play predominantly with three big guys down with the hands down in the dirt. And then you bring that the hybrid type uh, guy there. That's a guy that you could see a guy like Jacoby Winman, you know, maybe take his name out of the portal, knowing that he can be that stand up edge rusher every time to say, hey, pin your ears back and go and get ball. Um, you know, it could attract guys that's more like a like a. Um, T.J. Watt type of player that that can be out on that stand up edge there. But what I like about um, this defense, a, a lot of the stuff is it's pressure with the front with the front four there, as well as what it does for the linebackers. It keeps a lot of them clean and everything funnels to the linebackers. So linebackers should be excited for a defense like this because they're going to have, um, you know, great opportunities to go make a lot of plays a lot of tackles it's because it, things will be funneled to them so that is something that i'm excited about i love the fact that you know he's played in the big 10 he understands the mindset of football that is the big 10 football the mindset that you have to stop the run and then turn a team to be one dimensional i think that is something that he you know he will be able to do um so really excited about that has knowledge of the opponents in the conference um so that's a that's a plus um so now it's surrounding the rest of the defense i think um the secondary coach coach blue uh i'm really excited about him i think one he's a great guy he's a great person great dude played in the played in the nfl for years and now you know can teach our secondary you know what it takes to be at that next level so having guys with nfl experience and um and, uh, you know, bringing those to those guys down here, that's also one that's a big piece in recruiting as well. Because at the end of the day, you ask these kids, what do you want to do is I want to play at the next level. And these guys have played at the next level. They understand what it takes to get there. So they're going to instill that on you. So um, really excited about that. Really excited about what this defense can be. I, I, I think you can do a lot out of a defense like like he's bringing to the Spartans. A lot there, definitely a lot there. When you look at the coaching staff as it is right now, guys, what, what what's remaining? It looks like we have a defensive coordinator as soon as this is official. Joe Rossi comes in from Minnesota. You have your defensive secondary coach, defensive line coaches there. Uh, what what else is needed on the defense? But the linebackers coach potentially. 
Yeah, I, well, I he's think the, he's also yeah. the linebackers coach as well. He's the DC at, linebackers at, coach. Yeah, but yeah. You probably need another guy. Yeah, that will be so we saw, we we saw we saw an element of like a D corner having to do the dual role of linebacker and D coordinator. And so you know, you think about it with today's age and like obviously with the college football way it's where it's at. It's like you need someone to be able to like fully focus on the linebackers and the D coordinator be able to lead each position of the collective unit. Um, you know, you think about how we had it back when you had Coach Narduzzi and then you had Trestle, where, you know, Trestle was special teams, but he's also the main linebackers guys. And, you know, our linebacker crew, you know, through that tool, to his leadership really thrived, if you think, think about it, because you get that one on one a lot of time. And so, you know, yes, you still can implement your elements of your linebacker, uh, you know, mantra, but you're able to like monitor each position and as a collective unit. Yeah, especially this is like especially true now. It's if your head coach is an offensive minded coach, because you mm-hmm. know that mm-hmm. he will be spending more time with the offense. You know, back when Coach D'Antonio was there, he was defensive minded coach, so he spent a lot of time with the secondary. But he could also go to different elements, different individual drills. He could go to the linebackers and un- and have a feel and understanding of it. So that's why it's key that you know there is someone there that's developing the the linebackers on a day to day. Um, on field side of things. So this defensive coordinator can make sure the secondary is understanding the scheme that's in play, the, you know, the corners, you know, are they going to get a separate coach for the corners and, you know, coach for the safeties? Those, those are the different things and make sure that the entire scheme and everyone understands the entire scheme of the defense. So you were were you were you on with Coach D when we, he gave us that puzzle and everybody took their piece, signed it? Were you no, on, that was, was that the next year? That was, that was next yeah. so my senior year, like this is the elements of uh and I already said element again, so take a shot. Um <laughs> you take you, you take a piece of a puzzle piece, everyone was walking around with that piece, and then I think it was right before we got over to you know changing over from two a days and fall camp to then the, the season that week of everybody put together this puzzle piece and realizing like you are part of the, the the larger puzzle, the bigger picture, do your part. Everybody fits in. And to that point, you got an O coordinator, D coordinator, and then you got the position coaches really giving their full a hundred percent time to their position. But like our defense, you know, has to fit on each level. Like we have to be on clicking on all cylinders. And so I think there was an element of, <laughs> a part of that's my filler word. I'm going to get rid of it now. Um, <laughs> you have to look, like take a step back and say, hey, like if we have each level clicking in every game, um, that's where I think we were missing on on cert- certain games last season or this past season is that, you know, when the defensive line was getting pressure, you know, the defensive secondary, there was a click in or when the middle line or the, the, the middle level wasn't getting to the hook and curls or doing their part. Everybody had to to click to be able to have a productive defensive unit. So we got C- Coach Rossi, who has been at an element of top tier defensive ranked, right? Like, when is the last time we said, "Hey, a defensive ranked standpoint from all elements"? Say it again, <laughs> elements. I'm mean, like, everybody's gonna be like, "Hits you about the time we get done with this." Kudos so. <laughs> and element. Yes. Kudos element, and element, baby. We we vibing with you. Don't worry about it, man. Of a Spartan dog. I'm about to get in front. Element of a Spartan dog for sure. <laughs> Nothing need, wrong with that. I need my royalties, Mama Stray, because we out here getting all these these good shirts <laughs> with sayings. We ain't getting no royalties. <laughs> oh, you get all the royalties, boss. Hey, that's what it is. You know what I mean? Listen, this is this is this is exciting. You know, news to see this this new coaching staff kind of shape take form, take shape. Uh, right in front of our eyes. I mean, we're going to hear from one of the guys who's most impacted by this uh, in a few moments. But as we continue through this, A Block, transfer portal news. We got to get into this. So we look at the transfer portal tracker right now. So here's the updates. Boom, boom, boom. We have music to go along with that. Was that like the transfer portal? uh, Navigating that, it's like you got to like that movie, A Beautiful Mind. You got to get all the... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> different things here to see. You know, I thought in, did that uh, Law and Order. So we got it up, man. Uh, okay, so, so so let's get this part out of the way. The guys who have 
now committed to other schools. You see Noah Kim right here, who is uh, had committed to Coastal Carolina earlier today um, as a quarterback. And the other scholarship quarterback, Sam Levitt, is now going to Arizona State um, as a Sun Devil over there. So kind of on opposite ends of the of the country. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I talked to Noah today. Actually, how was, how was Kim? Yeah, no, it was good. You know, um, he you know, talked to him the first day before he was putting his name in the in the portal. We had a conversation, you know, about, you know, doing what's best for him and his future. And, uh, you know, talked to him today, sent him, you know, congr- a congratulatory text. And, you know, he said, man, I really wish it would have worked out in East Lansing. and really loved, you know, being a Spartan. Um, but he said, God's plan for me is to go here. And, I, you know, I told him definitely, you know, go there. Good luck to you. I know all, all of us on this show would definitely uh, be cheering for him, keeping an eye on him. Um, so hopefully he can, you know, continue to do great things. He's a great kid, great family. Um, and, you know, best of luck to him and also best of luck to Sam as well. Hey, is that offer still up for going to Mr. Kim's house when we go to Maryland? I still got to ask that too. Oh, we okay. That's week two. I mean, That's once, two. once I was saying once a dog, always a dog, right? Like, are we still in the family? I mean, we, yeah, good. we're doing that as long as he didn't is as long as he's in town, right? That's I mean, he right, right. on the way right. game, you know. You know, for the barbecue, we come with Mr. Kim. Don't think that, you know. Uh, look, Arizona State. When you talk about Sam Levitt, uh, one of the things that was funny that came up was the. Quarterback, if you can remember Jaden Rashada, I don't know if you remember recall this name. He was a quarterback who originally signed with the university or committed to Miami and then yeah. flipped to Florida for I think it was 13 point 13. something million dollars, mm-hmm. only to have the collective at Florida renege on that deal. And he was kind of a, a quarterback without a home. Well, Arizona State's where he landed, so you know. Quarterback world is a lot different. So and this is a guy who's a, a freshman as well. Um, nearly the same class, I believe, as Sam Levitt or a year before him. Yeah. I, don't, uh, yeah. I think, yeah. That's that's the thing, you know, and that goes back to, you know, listening to uh, Pookie and Uncle Ray Ray and I'm telling you, and then you get a lot, you lose all that money there and you end up somewhere like, uh, you know, this Rashad kid. You know, had all had had all that money in hand, and then listening. Oh, you can go for another mill here, <laughs> and you go, and then you left empty handed. Right, right. Ray. You, you look like Will Will in the house when when everyone the house was empty, looking around like where'd everyone go, kind of thing. So you know, that's the thing. Make these smart choices. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta make smart choices, man. What's this art? You asked me, did an NIL collective back off a deal? <laughs> Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, that's funny. You know, I know where you're going on that one. Yeah, it happens. It happened. And look, Arizona State. Sam same Levitt, high school as Sam as well? Same high school? Who went to the same high school? I don't, what did Tony G put back there? Same high school, cl- same high school class as Sam. Okay. okay, gotcha. I was like, whew. Yeah, one's from Oregon, the other one's from California, same class. Okay, so these guys are going to be right there in the room together. It's going to be a little tense in the quarterback room, but that's our competition. Competition. You better love it in this game. Right. You fellas know about that. Um, And we have another board to put up for those who are coming back out of the portal. Come on back. We have offensive tackle. Ethan Ball, well, no, Ethan Boyd and Brandon Ball. We got this backwards here. Ethan <laughs> hey, Boyd. Hey, hey, not, not the see, so you ain't going to get me like that, producer Tony. You're not going to get me. Uh-uh, uh-uh. But I know the difference. I ain't going to mess up the church's money right here. I know who's who. Yeah, okay. okay. Ethan, <laughs> Ethan Boyd and Brandon Ball would do return and take their name out of the portal. Yeah, I think we're gonna you're gonna start to see more and more of that as uh, as this coaching staff the stability starts to come in. There's gonna know um, the coach is gonna talk to these players, and you know you're gonna find out. Okay, maybe there is maybe it was a rash decision that I put out there, and uh, you know maybe this is the right fit for me here because of the vision of Coach Smith and his staff. 
as, as they start to, you know, fill out. And like I said, the big thing is the stability. Um, so that is something that we're going to see more of. And also, too, you could have put your name in the, in the in the portal and you really haven't had, much, you know, much hits. It's like, you know, you you dating that one girl. <laughs> but one time, one time, you know, you, you, she's like, hey, you know, I don't know yet. You know, you're trying to be there and you go out with the boys one time, you go out with the fellas and then, you know, you see girls at the club and you're like, ah, you know what? I really had a good back home. I need to go on the dance floor and do that thing there. I'm going to go back to go back to where it's stable at home. So that is, you know, maybe some of the, the things that go into that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Otis, you can speak, sir. Go ahead, speak freely. No, I I, th I think there's a, an opportunity to say I'm gonna give the new office alignment coach a shot, a chance, because mm -hmm. I feel like there's a um, an opportunity to meet coach and obviously see what the philosophy is. Because you know, I feel like when we are in this, I kind of take take ourselves back to when we were in the transition of waiting for our coach and Coach D and names mm -hmm. to throwing around, and you know, at that moment. I mean, if we were in this time, you know, think about the players and teammates that we play with would have hit the portal um, without even giving, you know, due processing of like this new coach and a fresh, clean slate, you know, knowing that, hey, I balled out last season. So not saying I'm good, but there's an element that, and I already said it, there's an element because there's always elements. Um, the fifth element, uh, there's an opportunity to see what this system in the scheme is for me. Um, and then you look at the players he's put into the, the NFL and training those guys. And so I think these two are being able to say, you know what, you know, we were depleted office and line wise. Now we got to go out. We got a fresh class coming in. We still need that leadership and guys that, that went through this grain, this grind this past season. So let's be able to say, hey, you know, yes, that's the past. And we're going to get to a new fresh start, new chapter. So let's give you this new staff an opportunity to to show themselves that, that they can provide an opportunity for me to get better. Yeah, offensive linemen, especially tackles with the length and, and size of these two uh, are hard to come by that have experience playing Big Ten football. I mean, so this is valued experience that we welcome with open arms back into the fold of East Lansing. I mean, listen, man, we love Spark Dogs. We've got to love them in the trenches. You've seen Coach Cap, offensive line coach for Michigan State before, has now – Moved on. This is brand new news, hot off the press, to Baylor. He's going to be a Baylor Bear. I know you know about them, Otis. Uh, so congratulations, yeah, Coach Cap, for moving he's on. joining Chip and Joanna Gaines, man. Oh, yeah, he's bearing <laughs> down that? out there. Boy, Waco. Waco, Waco, boy. How was Waco? Right. I've never been to Waco, man. How was, yeah, I was it was, out there? You don't want to I seen them on TV when I was a kid with this uh, drive, drive, the video drive guys. straight through said, on yeah. the way to Austin. I'm going to drive that. straight through on the way to Austin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen, we have a, some more portal news. Uh, these are players who entered the portal since last Thursday's show. Uh, we're going to show these guys right here into the portal. So we've got linebacker Jacoby Winman, tight end Evan Morris, edge rusher Chris Bogle. Defensive lineman, Dre Butler, Sebastian Brown, the wide receiver, Charles Brantley, the cornerback, tight end Malik Carr, and wide receiver, Jerron Glover. You know, I think there's, you know, half of those guys got a degree. And so I think there's there's a, there's an opportunity to say, you know, when I, I, I earned and paid my stripes, I've endured what has occurred to us and the, the, all the cards dealt. I've uh, I've I've handled them. I've also got my degree. So I don't not say I don't owe this this place another year, but like there could be like I want to see test the waters. I'm I deserve that. Like I did what I'm came here to do is I I finished this full complete circle of getting my degree. You know, half of those guys have gotten their degree. I mean, Jacoby, you know, just graduated, right? So there mm -hmm. there's that. Well, yes, we would love Jacoby to come back because we talked about it. He can be a, a huge a huge threat for what this defense is going to bring us. You know, what I'm surprised on is, you know, Malik, you know, Malik, you know, having, you know, Aiden Childs, you know, ready to rock, you know, an opportunity is going to find him to rock. And then you got a tight end coach coming in. I'm, I'm surprised. But, you know, it's everyone has an opportunity to go in and put their name in the portal. Um, now, Chuck, I feel like Chuck, there's – there's one he already gave us the kind of okey doke. Um, 
you know, put his name out when he was, you know, you know, last season and then, you know, battled through and then had, you know, some other injuries and he got concussions. So he never came back from that concussion protocol. You know, I hope that he, you know, if he's getting some stuff and flavor and love out there, um, but it's, I heard it. Hey, I heard it's tough out here, man. It's yeah, tough. damn tough it out is, here. It is tough out here to say, hey, I put my name in. Look, and everybody think know. they worth a quarter million, man. Everybody. Man. But the, man. that's the thing. That, but that's that's the thing. I know you talk about the graduating and everything like that. Yeah, that's great. But, you know, you, there's that time, too, where you got, if, you, if you're a guy that, you know, like, you know, there are people, there's a lot of people that think the grass is greener somewhere else when realistically the grass is greener where you water it. All right. So when you come, you know, so that, you know, figure that out. Cause if you go somewhere else, you're starting over again. And if you stay, you're starting over again because it's a new coach. You go somewhere else as a new coach as well. So wh why won't you stay where you have familiarity? You know, the campus, you know, the facility, you know, the guys in the locker room, you can be yourself. You don't have to go and be another, you know, start over and prove yourself again, you know, in that perspective as yourself, as a teammate and everything. So that's, that's something I struggle with when I see the guys entering the transfer portal. I think Jacoby's a guy that's probably going to come back uh, because he's probably going to have a conversation uh, with the with you know the new DC, and they're going to you know talk about you know what's going on, where things are, and and he might be a guy that comes back. But the thing is, some other guys that you know, like I don't mean any disrespect to some of these guys that are on here. Like we called games this year, we didn't say their name on air. We didn't say you know they're not in some other people's scouting reports. So. Like they need to come back where they and prove themselves to these coaches here, prove that loyalty here to these coaches here that that, that are, you know, like, hey, you know, last year was a uh, turbulent year. Now we're, we we want to stick it through. We want to be that foundation. That's the big thing I always go back to when a new coach came. Coach D'Antonio told us this, no matter what happens at the end of the day, no matter how many championships we win in the tenure here, you guys the first class is the foundation of building not just wins and losses, but that culture, the identity of what it is that Michigan State football is going to be, that that mindset. When anyone comes in now, they're going to say, OK, Michigan State football is this because these guys set that culture. These guys there, you know, so that's the thing that I have a little issue with when a lot of people are just jumping in because they feel the grass is greener somewhere else. But stay the course, be that foundation when you come back. You know, Michigan State offers you so much. And I've told people this, that forget X's and O's. You know, if you're part of this team, you stuck through all the, the ups and downs and everything. It affords you opportunities. Years I played my senior year was 07. I'm done. I'm back. I'm back within doing broadcast and doing what I, you know, integrated with the program because I was there. I was one of that foundation that Coach D'Antonio was there. My best year at Michigan State was my senior season being part of that foundation. So that's my advice to these guys that want to jump in there. Mm. Hey, straight, straight. We, mm. we haven't had a year in review yet. So you talk about, <laughs> about the broadcast. <laughs> Tell them, boss, hey, you, you, on, you on here, right? We can have it right now. Let's be open. Let's, well, let me tell you something. Well, next you year. Exceed expectations. <laughs> uh, you know. No. I mean, but so for, for me, there's an element of, uh, let's see, an element. I mean, I, how do we say element in as many possible ways as we can? Because I think we're playing a drinking it's game. It's a synonym here. Come it, on. It's a, it's a drinking game in the chat, I think. Oh, I, gosh. Which is awesome. And please I'll take it. Element, please, please element. drink responsibly. <laughs> Everybody's at home. They should be. Nobody's driving I mean, watching the show. Okay. Right. So, but, like, Malik Carr is a is a subject that, are, you know, that keeps coming up. People are talking about, is he going to come back? And he should come back. And the talent that he has. How many years does Malik have left? Because I think I saw that he has three. Is that is that accurate? You got the COVID year, and he's a redshirt junior, right? Yeah. Let's see if somebody can figure this one out. Because no, I think he – Yeah, he has. Tony G can figure it out. Or there exactly. it is. Uh, let me see. No, Brendan's telling us two. But yeah, I, I, I read two. today that he had three remaining years of eligibility. Hey, look, I, you're right, too. I can't do it any better than what you just said. I mean, this the each one of us' best year was our last year. And, and it's sticking through the ups right. and downs and everything that you have to go through as a college athlete at this level. 
is what sets you apart from most humans on this in the, in the United States. It just does. You know, this is a, this ain't easy. It ain't for the faint of heart. And you're going to have casualties along the way. But, you know, these gentlemen that are in this on the list right now that are in the portal, they got to reconsider. I know that the portal's different now where people want to go in there and kind of use this as a way to test the waters for value. And, and that's what this has really become. To, I don't necessarily think a lot of guys are thinking the grass is greener per se, like better opportunity. They can money. It's all about money. Uh, when guys are going into the portal, a lot of times, or the guys are looking for more playing time. There's guys that do that. They say, hey, look, I, I may not be playing a lot here. Let it me go to guaranteed. a different. No, no, it ain't guaranteed. You know that. But from Michigan State, you can play, you know, if, if you're not playing at Michigan State, you're not going to go, you know, I don't know, to a to a playoff team and, and get picked up there. So it's going it, to, you have to recognize that. You understand, like, hey, it's going to take work no matter where you go. Right. I ain't never seen a guy that went through college football and then had to put in a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, man. A lot of sleepless nights and going to bed, like worrying about what tomorrow's going to bring you. This is what it is. That's life, though. Guys, I mean, you can all attest. Yeah, that. I mean, studio. could you imagine, like, you're you're hap- you're going to have to learn a new system regardless. So why not, like, you already got skin in the game. You already got blood equity right now <laughs> there's why why i mean why why would you you know why would you give up all this foundation that you built to where yeah. it's going to be a clean slate regardless where you go and it's kind of like when you look at basketball uh players or they transfer and then you sit the par and like it's prime example rocket watch like yeah. i know it's football but rocket watch that's our really starting right. our starting guard and it goes to mississippi state and goes from like 30 minutes to six minutes, and then now he's at Oakland. And I, I like just sit, just sit and just take take go go through the grind, and you'll come out with a bit a better man. I think this is a an opportunity to say it's gonna be a clean slate, regardless. Like the grass, it's it's new, it's new sod, new turf. <laughs> True. Like <laughs> right. We're we're land grant school. That turf is replaced every year. <laughs> you ain't lying, man. Tom Rocket Watts. I mean, that was a name. Me and my father got my 86 year old father. He'll be 87 in a couple, like next week. And he's like, that boy that, that, you know, his name, he played basketball and he got the same name as that company. And I'm like, I don't know who you're talking about, dad. I'm thinking that he done lost it. But my dad done lost it. Right. Think of that. And we LL found LL Rocket. And I was like, that's how, that's how quickly I forgot about Rocket because you said 30 minutes to six. Now he done transferred again. Right. Be careful. He could have got that good NIL here with Rocket. Oh, man. Man, oh, man. Hey, missed opportunities, brother. Remember that, fellas, youngsters out there. Look, moving on, guys. Let's look at the 150 MSU student student athletes earned fall academic all Big Ten honors. This is what it's really all about right here. Hey. Oh, wrong wrong graphic. Wrong graphic. (laughs) No, but it's great, man. You know, you talk about that. Uh, that's that's why you're here. Um, that education piece, and that, that these guys can go out in, and perform in the classroom as well as on the on the field, on the on the court, uh, in their respective sports. You know, sh- uh, shout out to all of them for being able to you know achieve that because it's uh, it's definitely something. You know, playing a sport at a Big Ten, you know, and at a collegiate level, it takes a lot of toll on you with. Uh, you know, your practices, your travel schedules and everything. But if you can also do the school as well, you know, that is even, you know, a, you know, bigger deal. So congratulations uh, to uh, all those uh, athletes. Yeah. 19 of them, of the 70 student athletes in the big 10 that maintain a 4.0 GPA, Michigan state led the conference with 19 athletes. With a perfect 4.0 GPA, Otis. It's hard out here to get a 4.0. So. <laughs> oh man, if you don't start with one, it's over. <laughs> and compete like, hey, that's a uh, the how whatever the biggest font on a shirt can be is a kudos because <laughs> kudos because man, it was hard out here to get that. Like even get to the the three point higher just to maintain as you're trying to balance your sport. Uh, it's a it's a huge accomplishment, um, and we have student athletes day in day out are doing that um, on a daily. So I'm glad that Michigan State, you know, it's you know, 
it's academics first, then your sports second. So <laughs> I'm glad about that. You said it the right way. I said it the right way. All right, guys, moving on. Spartan hockey finishes the fall semester with a sweep of Notre Dame. MSU now finishes the first semester 12, 4, and 2 overall. And a 7-1-2 and two mark in Big Ten play. Michigan State also holds down first place in the Big Ten standings at 25 points, which is more points than it has compiled in conference play in six of the league's previous 10 seasons. Michigan State is a perfect 9-0-1 at home through the first semester. Now we have an 18-day break for exams and holidays and returns to the ice on December 28th and 29th at the Great Lakes Invitational. Go yeah, Eagles. Do y'all, do y'all remember y'all had coach, you had coach on, and we all talked about the, the practice gruff party. jerseys and the gruff, and they run, yeah. they wore the gruff. Yeah. And sold out, sold out before they even the puck dropped. Like boom. Mm. So it is uh that is a hot commodity. So I'm trying to get one for all three of us, but it's hard. Yeah. Out there. Yeah. yeah. As they call it, yes. it's a hockey, it's a hockey sweater. Element. Hockey sweater. Yes. Yes. Get, you get <laughs> us get element. us those sweaters. Now, if you haven't had the opportunity to go, Mun is where the place to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we are feared. Uh, mm. You can tell on the on the on the uh, the ice. You know, the when Notre Dame was going, I was about to say a different uh, comp- competitive field. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can see on the ice, man. On the um, like we're not. I mean, there were some the ice. You say the cleat. There were some people like getting knocked out in Notre oh, Dame. So yeah. fights, like you see, physical. it's a oh, it was physical. It was physical Ooh. on Saturday. Um, and throw. you see oh. the everybody, everybody uh, is, is is engaged. Now, starting January, we're going to add the libations and the spirits. Ooh, and so, yeah, just and you I already know, hockey, you know, the hockey environment with a yes. little bit of the monsters juice. will be turning up. What are we doing? Hey. Hey, <laughs> the monsters is going to be in, <laughs> they're going to be live. Let's get to our guests. <laughs> Listen, don't don't forget about goalie Trey Augustine earns Big Ten's first star of the week, Big Ten player of the week. Okay, so don't mm-hmm. forget that. Okay, yeah. look, at that gruff. look at Trey that gruff, Augustine, man. baby. <laughs> yes, look, sir. look at that gruff. A lineage of good goalies at Michigan there. State: Ryan Miller, Jeff Lurg, and now Augustine in there. Look at this, man. Look, look, you guys like what you heard so far. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. I see all the chat going on in the chat, all the chatter. Let's do that. Helps us out. Doesn't cost you guys anything at all. And don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms. We got an all-American, freshman all-American football player coming on the show in a moment after these messages from our friends over at IHOP and SeatGeek. IHOP and Wonka are dreaming up a magical new menu. Magnificently mouth-watering items like Wonka's perfectly purple pancakes, the fantastical Wonka burger, and of course, hover chalk pancake tacos. Every good thing in this world started with a dream, and now this one is a reality, only at IHOP. Try the new Wonka menu for a limited time. Kids eat free from 4 to 10 p.m., and see Wonka only in theaters December 15th. SeatGeek is the ticketing app for fans like the High Five Strangers guy. Game-winning interception. First down. Just a nice, solid tackle. If you're in arm's length, you will be swapping skin with this extrovert. You see, he knows SeatGeek got him a great deal on tickets, so we can focus on what he does best. Smacking palms. SeatGeek handles the tickets to sports, concerts, and more, so fans can fan. Guys, let me tell you something, man. We got a guy on here who had four and a half sacks, seven and a half tackles for oh, loss in 2020. Just, just go and just list it. List it out so I can say dog every time you do it. Go ahead. <laughs> four and a half sacks. Dog. dog. Seven and a half tackles for loss. Dog. dog. Just named freshman All-American honor roll. I don't dog. mention oh, dog, oh, dog, 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 super dog. Listen, three time captain at IMG at Michigan State's gonna have him as a captain for a long time for years to come. Jordan Hall joins this is part of MSU once again. Jordan, what's happening? Dog, <laughs> we got your audio. Oh, he on mute it. There you go. Not much. How's it going? There he is. There we go. Real good. 
Hey! 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 Look, I see that. I see the link too. I know you do it all. Yeah, I've been, I've been working on it. I've been working on it. Next season, they're gonna be hanging. Yes, sir. Jordan, welcome to the show. And the first thing I gotta ask is, you know, uh, Stray talked about you. You coming from IMG, and. When you were coming in, we talked about how you were going to be the most. If you go back to the film, you can rewind. We all said you were going to be the most ready freshman that's going to come in and you're going to contribute. I was like, you know, he's going to contribute on special teams, special teams, special, and then start getting some play. You came in and, and kicked the damn door down and was out there right away. How did IMG get you prepared for, you know, big time, big time college football? Uh, you know, the schedule that we have at IMG. Um, it's almost completely similar to uh, what I've been doing for the last semester uh, with having the practices in, in the morning, um, you know, classes during the daytime, um, and then de devoting the rest of that time afterwards to football. Um, so that the aspect of my scheduling kind of prepared me the most going into the season. Yeah, Jordan, you, know, you said, we, you know, we have Mama Hall with you, right? So yeah. mm -hmm. you were talking like, you know, you were ready to get up here and show obviously what has been televised and advertised uh, of Jordan Hall coming in. Um, you know, we were able to see you like grow like week over week. And, uh, you know, when you got here, you know, you learned a new system, you know, talk about how quickly it, it, it took you to obviously learn the scheme and start to get the, uh, the leadership quality that you obviously bring in uh, to this defense. But like, how long did that take? And when did it click? You know, it could have, was it the first game or is it like mid, middle of the season where things were clicking, where you were able to play faster because you know ex exactly what was going on? Um, I'd say going into uh, Washington week, I felt really comfortable with um, the schemes. I felt before the season even started, I felt comfortable with, um, you know, the assignments that I had um, and starting to learn more about other people's assignments. Um, but I'd say like playing wise and, and being comfortable, uh, you know, like making checks and certain things like that. I'd say um, once I really started playing more because, you know, Jacoby's um, unfortunately got hurt that second game. And so I kind of didn't have a choice. I kind of had to be ready to to do those things come uh, Washington week and kind of took it off and ran with it every week after that. Jordan, you know, as a guy who was able to see you play your senior year at IMG because, you know, you were teammates with my son down there. You know, there was not much difference the way you looked on the field from a communication standpoint. As a football player, we look at that. We look at as a linebacker, is he reading? You know, obviously, you got to know the down and distance, the situational football. You're you're looking at packages. You're seeing the personnel groupings. And, and, and it seemed like you were a guy who at a very early age was able to get people in position and, you, you, you know, communicate either right or wrong. You seem comfortable out there in Big Ten play on the big stage. When you look at this new staff, the things that you had to go through and you have a time right now to reflect, how do you feel about the future for Michigan State football and you being in it? Um, you know, the, the whole coaching staff that they've brought in so far, um, I've had great relationships, every conversation that I've had with uh, each coach because they've made it a point of emphasis to meet everybody on the team every interaction that I've had have been, have been positive. Um, the outlook on what the future of Michigan State looks like is something that aligns with my ideals and what I look for in a program. So, um, you know, every every interaction I've had have been really good. They've been they've been great coaches. They have a background of of changing programs around. Um, they just brought in our new coach. Um, so ex excited about that. I talked to him a little bit today uh, and yesterday and uh, we've we've connected really well. Um, and yeah, so the, the new staff that they brought in, I'm, I'm, I'm excited that they're here. Um, I think they're excited to be here also. So, so it's safe to say. It's safe to say Jordan Hall will be in the green and white next season for the Spartans. I'll be, I'll be, I will be on campus in January for the start. For the, <laughs> I will be, I will be there in January. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> So you're saying there's a chance. That's all we need. <laughs> I'll be there in January. Jordan, Jordan, I guess, you know, obviously you went through some pains this season. Um, but I don't – I think all three of us can agree. I didn't, 
I didn't see a drop down in your your energy, your love mm -hmm. for the game. Uh, it was infectious. Uh, everyone was like rallying around. I saw it being from obviously a defensive guy. Uh, I mean, you're you're hitting the hole and you like you're trying to relinquish obviously pain and 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 get everyone to level up, right? And I I saw that. Um, I mean, you had total of twelve tackles in that Penn State game. Although it didn't have a, a a win at the end of that 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 game, you kept that same energy and like finishing strong. Um, can you, can you share with Spartan Nation of uh, what what were the issues on the defense this season that you feel that this new staff and giving them a the chance for this next spring leading into hopefully next season that you want to see uh, in a defense that kind of help models what you're looking for? Um. No, no offense to our old offensive staff. Uh, I, I mean, I love those guys. They came in. I mean, we were all dealt a pretty bad hand last season, given what was going on. Uh, but I feel like a big issue that we had was the defense was on the field a lot. Um, you know, we held the number 11 team at the time to 13 points in the first half, which I think is great defensive play mm -hmm. uh, on, on our end. You know, we gave up some big plays, but, you know, the rule of defense has been, but don't break. We got them down there. Uh, we forced a missed field goal. And we make we forced them to take field goals. I think they didn't score their first touchdown until about the end of the second half. Um, so, um, but defensively, scheme wise, you know, we got to do good at uh, better at stopping a run, getting you know um, early early in the downs, um, and force them to pass the ball. Uh, last year, I think we were really good third down defense when we got them to that point. When we played some of our tougher opponents, um, it was harder to kind of get to those third and sevens, third and eights that we that we like. But um, having implemented that this season, I feel like this staff is going to do a great job of doing that. Um, and the players that that will be here, uh, will will buy will buy in into the scheme that they're that they're putting forward, um, uh, to get to the situations that we want on defense and offense. Yeah, uh, Jordan. So you know, to going back to Otis, you know what he was saying there with, yeah, it was a brutal season from all from off the field and. Uh, and just to, to the players' credit, all the off you issue had nothing to do with any players whatsoever. So, you know, shout out to that. But um, how much of a drain mentally was it for you guys, you know, with everything that was just happening, you know, behind, you know, you, you're 2-0, and oh, you know, you win your second game of the year, and then boom, that news hit the next day. You know, now they're having players only meet and they're doing different things, reshuffling the deck. How much did that take a mental toll on the players? Mm -hmm. um yeah i mean the i mean when the news first struck we we're like okay but then it seemed like it was something new each week after that right um and i think after i think the game where it was like our first game where there was nothing we didn't have any news before the game or anything like that uh okay. we gave we gave up a, a lead to Rutgers, and so it just seemed like it was always something but um you know, we 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 took it each week as especially before um, Nebraska, where, you know, we said, you know, this week, this is the week that we win. Um, and there's no there's no if ands or buts about it. And I think everybody saw that that game like we were resilient that game. Like we weren't going to leave out of Spartan Stadium without a win. And um, once we got that first win, it was like a, a relief lifted, lifted off our shoulders. Um because just from all the the different things that had happened each week, and so all that was built up into that one game. But I mean, it was going along with it was very. It was I mean, it was it was stressful um, during the season, especially um, not knowing the the outcome of what the season uh, were coming in, especially as the um, the season came closer to an end. Not really knowing what that uh, would look like. But one thing I can say was with the staff that was there, and especially with the players that. Um, that are still here now. Um, I mean, we, they, everybody was bought in until that clock struck zero at, at Penn state. Everybody, we showed up every day, each week, um, did what we were supposed to do. I know we didn't get, uh, all the outcomes that we hoped for, but, um, each week we, we fought and we kept fighting. Jordan, you know, when, when you talk about getting through the trying times and how that was stressful, obviously, I mean, everybody could see it. And, you know, we like to talk about the negative side, but who, if anybody on the team was a guy who kind of kept things light and was funny? Um, you know, we have the oil can award. I, I think they still have that. Uh, who Who is that person on the team? Uh, 
I can't speak for offense wise, but uh, my guys Sam Edwards and Aaron Brule, like they, I even I, I posted this uh, right after the Penn State game was the picture of us holding the spittoon. Um, like those were the, those guys, that room was the reason why I, I like even with everything going on, I love. Like I call it like even like on my when I wake up in the morning and plug my phone into my car, it doesn't even say like go to school, it says go to work. It thinks it's my job, which it is. But that's the reason why I love coming to work um every day was because of that room right there, the energy that those guys had. I mean, if you I don't know if you guys have ever had a conversation with Sam. He's probably the most uh underrated guy on the team. He's been there uh a long time. He stuck it out. Um, but he always has high energy and uh Amber Lee, he's just a funny guy. You know, I'm gonna miss him uh, next season. He's going out, uh, chasing the chasing his dreams. Happy for him, proud of him. But uh, those those two guys right there kept the energy up for the whole team. Mm. Yeah, we had Amber Lee on here from the boot, baby. The and we boot, like to talk baby. about. Yeah, yeah, he talks. He doesn't even know that he's celebrating after those tackles that he does. He said, "I don't even know that I'm doing that." When I'm <laughs> that sounds like something he would say. He just does things <laughs> radically random. I, I, things. I want to ask you one more question before the guys ask you. And it's when you here you are, you know, in your first action, your game action in college. Is there somebody that gave it to you that you feel like, man, this guy was tough to tackle? Somebody that ran through your face, or did you not experience that? Um, great question, Stray. Yeah. Great question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, I guess the, the question you asked me is like, welcome to college moment. Kind yeah, of yeah, that welcome to college, um, you know. Yeah, I, I would say, uh, probably that Ohio State game. I think that was like the first mm. one on one touchdown I ever gave up. Mm. Um, and I, I mean, that that hurt me to my core. I hadn't given up like a, a personal touchdown, uh, the whole season. But you know that was a really good team. They had a it was a really good throw and a really good catch. Um, but yeah, that one that one definitely that one definitely hurt me for sure for sure. Who was it? It was um, the tight end Stover. Tight end Stover. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a good oh, tight end. He's a good man. tight end for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm with you. I'm with you, Jordan. My welcome to college moment was also against Ohio State as well. So man. we have something those, going those on. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like, but, go ahead, go ahead, sure. Yeah, so with that, uh, you know, that welcome to college moment, did you ever have like a moment where you just sat back, like, holy shit, look at me, I'm playing in front of you know 80,000? Or, you know, did you have that moment? What was that positive welcome to college moment like for you? Um, so I'm gonna go with two where, where I had one moment where I was like, okay, like I'm here. Like it was the first kickoff. I was on kick return against central Michigan. I was just looking out in the stands like, okay, like, you know, this is what you've worked for you here. Did you see um, Connor? Did you see Connor Stallions? <laughs> no, I, no. I'm, I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. I didn't see him. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a big, that was like my awe moment. But um, actually, I, and then my second one was uh, um, I talked about it in, um, an interview that we had with MSU football. Um, it's an eclipse somewhere, but um, where I was like, I just, I'm waiting for that first big play. And um, it was my sack against Minnesota. Um, that was like, yeah, you know, this, this feels nice. Like this is <laughs> the play I've been, I had had a couple missed sacks before yep. that game. I'm like, I, I, and I actually, so we have a turnover sheet that we fill out before each game. And I filled it out that game. And I said, I'm going to, I'm gonna strip the quarterback, or I'm gonna strip. I'm not. I'm. Gonna, I'm gonna strip somebody, and um, <laughs> and uh, so having that come to fruition like that, I was like, okay, like this, this is my moment. Yep. Ooh. Ooh. Like you talk about Jordan, like look at Man, that knee. Look at like he got on one leg. Just oh, he hey, he don't, he don't even see it coming at all, right? <laughs> yeah. So you had as a coordinator, obviously on that side. Like obviously, you don't even know that he will be your beef as a coordinator um, on the opposite side of the ball, but he was able to see you in person, but also maybe scout you. Uh, have you had a chance to talk to Coach Rossi at all yet? Yeah, I, I've talked to him um, a few times. You know, he didn't know. I mean, rightfully so. He was worried about his defense when we played him, so he didn't know right, that's true. Know, facts, much man. about right. me um, before he came here. But um, I, I have reason to believe he was one of the, I was one of the first uh, people that he spoke to. Um, coming uh to oh, that's facts. State. and um he um fun fact actually he um 
his one of his closest friends was Billy Miller, which is the head coach at IMG. So um, they had conversations uh, about me before he came up here. Um, but yeah, we we talked um, uh, yesterday. Just kind of got a feel for each other, you know. Talked about you know personal things or whatnot. Um, today we talked a little bit more about um, you know a little thing about schemes and about where he saw me at. Uh, a thing that I I like most was. Um, he told me a lot of the things that I need to work on. You know, he told me, you know, we got um, 10, he got through 10 or 15 clips before we got on the phone and he listed off five things that uh, he's going to help me develop at, um, which I felt like I don't, no, no offense to anybody who gives me praise and, and stuff like that, but I feel like I don't get a lot of that. And mm -hmm. so getting that from a, a guy who had just stepped in the building, who, you know, are trying to, get me to stay per se um you know he was more focused on you know this is what we need to work on this is what i can do for you this is what i've done and um you know if you want to be here for that let's get after it so that was my next question i'm like what what do you feel like you needed to work on but uh you know are you are you comfortable with stating those five things that you need to go ahead and work on in the off season getting ready for spring football yeah so um the five things that we talked about um just improving on linebacker footwork um, getting better at open open field tackling, um, my blitz pads. Um, I put them down so I so I wouldn't forget. That's a lot, though. Yeah, you don't yeah. got to list off all. You, you, you ain't got to. You got to. Like, hey, I mean, yeah. this, this this is the defensive guy. I want I want to know too. Like you know, just uh and you know getting off blocks and yeah, I was about play, to say that. and play recognition, which you know just is going to come with time and, and repetition and whatnot, but. Don't mess with them offensive linemen too much, man. Just shock them and get the hell out of there. Yeah, okay? I know. I know. Don't, don't <laughs> get the, Let me tell you. Especially, we want, especially we want in this you to conference. Come. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Especially oh, yeah. in this conference. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you got some interceptions in your repertoire, though? You got some You got some takeaways where you can take it to the crib? No, you say I can't. You. I tell you, I'm going to get – well, all right, you can, you can quote me now. I will get an interception next year. Okay. It will happen. Okay. It will happen. Not, I got, not no, I got not close, no tip ball. Not no tip yeah, ball. I, know, I got close. I got my hand on one of them this year. I had a close one against Michigan. Um, I got. I just got to get a little bit more greedy. I'm. Gonna, I'm gonna be playing a little bit more free. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, it, it'll come next season for sure. How many did you have last year at IMG? I think you had like three, four. Uh, no, and I, I, had, that. I had. I had. I had one. I should have had two, but I dropped one. I dropped dropped one. One? Oh, okay. it, was, it was against it was against Alabama uh in, on ESPN. Yeah. And it was low. I went I dove for it and they hit yeah. the ground. And so they called it incomplete. But uh yeah. I caught it though. If you ask me, I caught it. <laughs> hey, uh if you ask me, I caught it. So someone else, you know, you came in, you know, to Michigan State. You are a, a highly uh touted recruit coming in there. But coming along with you now, we gotta say now, Mama Hall. She's getting yeah. some notoriety, you know, among Spartan Nation. And then mm -hmm. um, her mother as well, Grandmama Hall, you know. M2. Maybe, M2, you M2. M2. Yeah, M2. but Grandma M2. don't want it. Grandma Hall. It's, gra it's just Grandma, right? Like, you, <laughs> she told me she wrecked me. They, you know, they're, they're a staple, you know, game day, they be going over. They be getting their steps in every tailgate. Every <laughs> game day. They, you going to see them somewhere. Oh, right. yeah. no other, other than the stadium Mama until the kickoff. <laughs> So, you know, like how, you know, how much of a, you know, like every single game they, they drove from uh, Virginia, you know, to East Lansing, every home game. And, you know, on the road, they were there. I remember going up in the stands at Rutgers and there was like, you know, 15 people or so. There was a big crowd there um, for you. You know, like how special is that having, you know, someone that, that just wants success for you so bad that she, you know, the sacrifices that she made and how, you know, how special was that and how proud, you know, that you're on the field and you can look up and you can see, you know, her there every game. Yeah. I think that um, that's probably um, the most overlooked thing when it comes to player success is their support system. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm blessed enough and I'm fortunate enough to have, to have a great one. Uh, with my family and and my close friends that can come to as many games um, as they can, um, but yeah, having them, I yeah, and you can ask her. I try, I find them um, before every game, um, before the game, and up in the stands, no matter where they're at. Um, so having having them with me and, and having their support means the world to me. Mm. 
I mean, yeah, I met your brother uh, in Detroit with a Penn State game. And, yeah, uh, and I was like, man, like y'all <laughs> six four, six five. I was like, man, look. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pop St. Little now. Pop St. Little. He is you not. No. He's <laughs> that's where we. That's where we get it from. He's oh like, yeah, man, man. Hey, listen, Jordan, you 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 have uh, done so much. You know, when at a, at such a young age, and when you look at, you know. Guys like this, I just seen a comment here. While the record doesn't show it, this is an amazing group of young men on this team this year. This is Sean Williams. When the wheels could have totally fell off the bus, they held it together. Like, what does that statement mean to you, uh, even above the, the win-loss record? Um, Just the, the fight and the resilience that we had – throughout the course of the season, it shows the, the kind of – because the stuff like that you can't really teach. It just shows the kind of program and the type of school that Michigan State is. Um, we didn't choose to have um, any of the outside things happen to us this season, um, but we chose to wake up every morning, come to that building, practice, lift, travel games, and play those games to the best of our ability. Um so that's just that was just our our mentality after I mean weeks um after week three. Um we knew that you know we had some uncontrollable things that that happened to us, but that's not gonna change how we prepare and how we go out there and, and play football games. What got you in the mood for games, Jordan? What what music do you listen to pre-game? Uh believe it or not, it's either I'm either on a on a I always so before each game I take a lap around the field. That's all I don't warm up or anything. I just go out there, take a lap and go back inside. I walk. Um, but usually on that walk, I'm usually playing some either country music or R and B. One of one of the other. I'm not I'm not a big, you know, jump around. I make jokes and stuff. I'm I'm very mellow, yes. <laughs> but I, I make jokes and stuff because I I mean I'm I'm into the moment. That's just who I am. Uh, right. I don't let the moment be too big or, or too little. I just I'm always at that same level. But uh, yeah, usually before games, I'm listening to some R and B or some or some country music. What kind of country music you listen to? I knew he was going to ask. Oh, yeah. He's he gonna get into that. I think I'm not wrong. If I, check, if I check my Apple Music right now, I think Luke Combs was the yeah. Luke okay. Combs was the last artist that I was there playing. There you go. So, Beer never broke my heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't go wrong. Can't there go you wrong. go. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, too, man. And then also too, Jordan, when when Coach Barnett came in as the head coach, he he brought back some traditions of the walk from the from the Kellogg loved to it. the to the to the uh, stadium. You heard, he loved it. You yeah, what did you, what did you feel? How did you feel about that walk? And you know, the fans, like, especially that first game, it was like super electric too young for that. and emotional. Too young for that that. Why, why are you trying to lead him? Why are you leading the witness? <laughs> Let him answer it purely. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I mean, I loved having uh, I experienced both getting off the bus and uh, walking there, but I, I for sure loved the, the full entire walk. Um, just we have the the best fans in college football and taking out half of that walk uh doesn't do them justice you know i know that first time we we brought it back as the, as the games went i got a little colder the the group kind of narrowed away a little bit <laughs> but like, even um what, i forget which game it was it was raining or it was a, it was a little cold and rainy before but uh, even then there were still uh fans light up outside the kellogg but um i'm definitely um, a fan of having having the walk, and it costs a lot more money to have buses take us <laughs> point two of miles up the road. But uh, <laughs> hey, but, hey, kick yeah, that I, into the NIL budget if you know. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so no, I, I prefer the walk for sure, the full walk. walk okay, then how? Yeah, what about Thunderstruck coming into you know playing? Because that's a like we all grew up. That's what we came out to. <laughs> Thunderstruck. You know Thunderstruck? It, yeah, yeah. And then it changed, you know, and now it came back, you know. So mm -hmm. did you like that 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 feeling, that atmosphere, or did, did it not mean anything? Uh, I'm trying to remember if – because I think when I'm just running out, I'm just like – I'm not even focused Hearing on it, the music. It. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just – I'm so – I'm so focused on what's about to happen. But uh, 
I do. I think I do like. I think if I do remember, because I can't even remember the song that they changed it to. I think it was like uh, a song that an artist made. Um, or a song, I can't remember. I think they played it for us um, a couple a couple days before our first game. But um, no, I mean, I, I I mean, I feel like the bass of the of the first song. I remember that more. I felt that more. But uh, but you know, I'm not really too worried about that song. But. Fair okay. enough. So, so, so tell me, you've been in East Lansing, you know, I mean, these are, we, we got, we're hitting home runs with you right now because people love these questions and we're, we're responding to the chat. This is the fans asking through us to you. Okay. Now, what was your favorite spot so far to eat in East Lansing? Uh, okay. So this isn't East, in East Lansing, but I can give you an East Lansing one, but I go to Ocean Crab Probably oh. once a week. I don't know if y'all heard of that. Shout out, shout out, Noah Kim. Noah Kim. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> some of crab. Is it, is the it, bags. Me, Jacoby, and Brule. We used when we had a little bit more time. We used to go there once a week. Um, I love that place. Um, what was your order? I, I get the Ocean Three, which oh, okay. is which is lobster, corn, uh, crab legs, and shrimp. Mm. Yeah. So that's some coastal Lobsters. boys. See? <laughs> Well, you got the boys from the boot and in the VA, you know. Yeah. Anyway, but a place in in like East Lansing, East Lansing. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I probably uh, I don't you need, know. You need some more restaurants. <laughs> yeah, I know. I always said we. Uh, I always use like our little meal plan or whatever. I always go to either Chick Fil A or Tropical Smoothie. But I know there's. A, <laughs> I can't think of a place now where I've been to. But okay. there's definitely some good places around that I got to get around to. Hopefully, in the been spring. Been to Sparty's right. Coney Island. I have been. I have been there okay. a, few, a few times. I do like their food. Yeah. You can't do three pancakes there. You can't. can't. No, I can't. I try. <laughs> I, I've actually only ever gone there for breakfast the times mm -hmm. that I've gone, and I've never been able to finish it. So yeah. Oh, oh my! I'm oh Pizza House. I go there. I yeah Pizza House. There it is. There hey. It is. Yeah. I feel like everybody probably says that. No, but I really do like Pizza House. I <laughs> did, the did, wing uh, spot, crunchies. <laughs> yeah. The real answer is IHOP. I mean, we get a lot of people talking about. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jordan from the Bayou. <laughs> <laughs> Atlantic Ocean in the in the boot is a little bit. Hey, look. Have you stopped up? at Peanut Barrel? Have I have made? not. No. Okay. And then uh, what's Kings? I don't know about Kings. Slap. Raising Kings. Oh, Raising Kings. Yeah. This says oh, King, K A N G S. Kings. I'm thinking me. I hope. I mean, yeah, I've definitely gone to Kings. If that's what he's. Oh, talking Charlie about. Kings. Yeah, Charlie Kings. Charlie oh, Kings. Charlie Kings. Charlie Kings. It's like a look. Yeah, it's it's legit too. That's that's good. If you want a low key, if you want a low key Korean. good burger, you got to swing by. It's not in East Lansing, but Dagwoods. Dagwoods. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I've, I've made that before. I made that before. Oh, yeah, yeah. Low key good burger, cheap burger, good burger. It'll, yeah, it'll, he, it'll get you he right. ain't had the east side fish fry yet though either jordan blaha's favorite i think i have the east crack chicken fish crack I fish so. yeah. yeah george hey george look george was out here <laughs> 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 i know we run it long man too but <laughs> yeah, listen, but yeah listen. jordan appreciate you coming on man uh definitely uh you know we we talked about the season wins and losses wasn't what we wanted, all of us as Spartans. And, uh, you know, I, I think I speak totally clear for, you know, everyone on this uh, podcast for Stray, for Otis and myself as former Spartan dogs and former players, former players and still Spartan dogs. Uh, we really, you know, appreciate the the energy, the professionalism you brought. You know, I was talking to Stray, looking at you at the, when we traveled, you know, the way you carried yourself in the team hotels, you know, on the field and everything like that. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate the energy that and the enthusiasm that you bring to Spartan football. And, uh, you know, congratulations. There's a lot coming for you. Finish off the next two years here in East Lansing and then go go get that money in the league. <laughs> Buffalo, the Buffalo, money, the Buffalo, Bills, yes, Buffalo Bills. He can't, he can't choose that. Hey, good luck on those finals too, man. I know it's I know it's I just took my out. I just took my last final today. I got oh, an eight, I got oh. an 80, I got an 88 on my comm exam. So we're hey. oh, man. Can, hey. we, can we lobby for that other two percent? 
Come on, I was trying. Like, it was 50 questions. I was trying. I was trying. <laughs> Congratulations when you on get that. To head home. When you get to head home. I'm home right now. It was an online. Oh, you home now? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm home right now. Okay. okay. Right. Listen, oh, you got we got one more question, and then we're going to let you go. What more home we making? I'm on. I'm on uh, I got to get my body right, so I'm on meal prep for while I'm home. So oh, I've, been, I've, been make, I've been making food, yeah. yeah. See? Okay. There's a difference. See, Times, it's have different. Changed, Times, Times have changed. Times have changed. Just so <laughs> Shout out to our dietitian Rachel. She she got you right. She, she got right? me right. She got yeah. me right for sure. So what you she eat, don't though, and call like, her a dietitian. Do not call her a nutritionist. She will she will get mad. Mm. Yeah, see, dietitian and the uncrustables. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Said, no, no fried chicken for baby boy. So she made it. She made it for me, but I I told her I couldn't eat it. Hey, man, right. what 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 NFL or college former player do you most emulate from the linebacker position? Like, what who who do you look at and say, "Hey, this is who I want to be like"? I think it'd be crazy to not say Fred Warner. I think he's, I mean, he's the best linebacker in mm-hmm. in the NFL right now. Um, I had a Bobby Wagner jersey growing up. Mm. Um, I, I still do actually. It's in my apartment back in East Lansing, but um. And and a, a big another player I looked up to growing up was Luke Keekley. Those those two players. Oh, and and Darius Leonard. So those four, if I if I could combine all of their skill sets and in one, that's the kind of linebacker that I want to be. Luke Keekley minus all the concussions. Yeah, like whatever <laughs> else he had going on, just just the football and and I too, for sure. Absolutely. Mm. Listen, Jordan, man, we appreciate the time, brother. This has been great. You are great. Continue to do great things and we'll be cheering for you uh, like everybody in this chat and beyond Everyone wants Mama Hall to pop up and say hi oh, ma, ma, come down here real quick ma <laughs> she said no okay <laughs> <laughs> i heard what no, i'm okay <laughs> yeah she's she's coming yeah <laughs> mama hall listen this is a family show you know we don't we don't get into all that craziness but we want <laughs> Mothers to come on the sh- there Yay! she is. <laughs> hey, mama, <laughs> how you doing? She, how you doing? She, how how y'all doing? doing? Good, good, good. Yeah. Doing great. We better now. Seeing you, you got your good. baby at home. Hug him, love on him, <laughs> and then come on back to East Lansing with him. Yeah, yeah. You, you, she, <laughs> yes. yes, yes. All right. Hey, I listen. Appreciate that, you guys. That, that'll put a. This is gonna put a perfect bow on the show. Appreciate you know, you. for for Mama Hall. You know, don't forget Jordan Hall, Otis Wiley, Ju Culcher. I'm Jason Strayhorn. This is Sparta MSU. Everybody, have a good night. God bless you. Go green. Go white. Go white. This is Sparta MSU is a combined presentation of Playfly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. The show is produced by Tony LaBarbera, Tony Gastella, and Process Driven Consulting. Additional support is provided by Brendan Duravage. On location technical support provided by Good Fruit Video. Be sure to follow our host, Jason Strayhorn, J.U. Culprit, and Otis Wiley on social media. To stay up to date with all the latest This is Sparta news, please like and subscribe by visiting our link tree and tell a friend to do the same. Thank you for your support, and as always, Go green.